This morning, we heard Vic read from two of the Old Testament prophets. It is quite normal to read the prophets in the season of Advent, this season of preparation. We heard the prophet Micah, one of the 12 minor prophets, a contemporary of Amos and Hosea and Isaiah. He lived to see Israel fall to the Assyrians in the 8th century BCE and to see Judah plundered by them in the 7th century. And we heard the prophet Jeremiah, one of the three major prophets who lived in the 6th century BCE and who saw Jerusalem and the temple fall to Babylon and many of her leaders taken into exile. We also heard Barb read from the Gospel of Luke the prophetic words of Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist a priest of the house of Aaron, husband of Mary's cousin, Elizabeth. Elizabeth and Zechariah were unable to have children, but late in life, the angel Gabriel announced to Zechariah that they would. He doubted the news, and as a result, his ability to speak was taken away from him. Can you imagine those who it might be nice just for a moment to have their speech taken away from them? But can you also imagine how hard that would be to lose your voice? After the birth of John, Early in the first century, Zechariah's speech was returned. And he lifted up his voice immediately to speak about his son's future in what has become known as the Benedictus, a version of which we opened worship with this morning. And in this song, we get a glimpse of the ministry of John the Baptist a prophet in his own right, the prophet of the Most High, a herald, a forerunner, to prepare the way for the life and ministry of Jesus, his cousin, and the message of salvation he would bring. And of course, Jesus himself was also a prophet, even as he was a teacher of wisdom and a healer, and the bearer of many other titles, Son of God, Son of Man, King, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, Messiah, Logos, Christ, the Word, second person of the Trinity. But certainly, he was a prophet. The life of a prophet is not one to envy. Raised up and called by God in the midst of times of political turmoil and economic injustice and religious hypocrisy to speak a word of challenge to the unjust rulers of the world, often predicting destruction and devastation that is never heard as good news to the leaders, and then bearing the consequences Jeremiah was imprisoned, Jesus was crucified, John was imprisoned and beheaded, other prophets lost home and family. But these prophets also brought a word of hope to those bowed down beneath life's crushing load, to quote a carol to those who wore the brunt, bore the brunt of the political corruption, the economic inequality, and the religious abuse. A word of hope to the ordinary people, the eventual restoration of cities and land, the restoration of the Davidic line, a just line, prosperity, the reign of God, 
the Messiah, a savior, a new community, a new creation, God's kingdom in our midst, a time of peace, righteousness in the land, justice for all people, salvation and birth, security, forgiveness, safety, light for those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. I don't know about you, but <clears throat> I don't like to be forgotten. I don't want to be forgotten. I want to be seen. I want my suffering to be noticed and held by those who love me. I also want my potential to be seen, my gifts to be noticed and held, my possibilities to be nurtured, my future to matter. And I also want my suffering and my potential and my future to matter to those who have power, whether political, economic, or religious. I do not want to be an insignificant cog in the machinery of the powerful. And if this is true for me, a professional middle-class white woman, how much more is this true for someone without my level of privilege? How much more is this true for those who are often overlooked? How much more is this true of the one who is living at the poverty line? How much more is this true of the one living as a refugee? How much more is this true of the homeless person? How much more is this true of too many African Americans and Native Americans who live with the long-term economic and psychological impacts of forced displacement, genocide, slavery, racist structures, and racist behaviors and white privilege? How much more is this true of women who continue to be at the mercy of patriarchal structures, including loss of reproductive rights? How much more is this true of trans, queer, and non-binary people who in many places are not free to be themselves? How much more is this true of the neurodiverse and the differently abled when the structures of the world were built without them in mind? The prophets took on political, economic, and religious corruption for the sake of the people of God, for the sake of God's beloved, for the sake of those deemed small and insignificant like the little town of Bethlehem, like David himself, the youngest and least of the sons of Jesse. The prophets noticed, albeit with a whole lot of help from the God who called them, the suffering of the people. And they took note of their potential. Not all of us are called to be prophets, to take on the powerful and face the consequences. We know people from our own time who have followed their footsteps. Martin Luther, Jing, Martin Luther King Jr., Oscar Romero, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Mother Teresa, Daniel Berrigan, currently our own Reverend William Barber with the Poor People's Campaign. And at the local level, folks working with Together Colorado and with the Immigrant Rights Coalition people who saw Ingrid, including our own congregation, who noticed her and her need, and especially a handful of dedicated members here who partnered with her these past four years, and our peace and justice team who walked the whole journey. 
Not all of us are called to be prophets, but a prophet and their prophetic words are only the beginning. They show us the way, but the way is ours to follow. To find that one person, that one group of people, local or distant, the ones who have not been seen, the ones who have been overlooked, the ones whose beauty and potential have gone unnoticed, and to stand with them in solidarity, work by their side to open up a way for a better future, join with them in demanding justice, sit with them in compassion, offer them our voice and our support. The prophets see and state a new reality, but the rest of us, we do the work on the ground. but I would also bring this much closer to home. I believe that during this pandemic, it has been harder to see each other. Harder to see each other's suffering. Harder to see each other's needs. Harder to see each other's potential. This is partly the very tangible reality of not being in close proximity, not passing each other in the entryway, not sitting across from each other in the pews, not standing together in the kitchen over a cup of coffee, not sharing meals together, not having conversations, not seeing each other's eyes, not seeing each other's tears with masks, not seeing each other's facial expressions, or the video is turned off on Zoom, it has been harder, literally, to see each other in all of our suffering and all of our potential. And then it has been harder to keep track of each other because we tend to focus on those who are right in front of us. Harder to see the ones who have drifted away from Zoom, drifted away from Cairn. Harder to keep in touch, and emotionally harder because we have been tending to our own loss, our own suffering, our own grief, or the loss, grief, and suffering of those in our immediate bubble. What already required a disciplined practice The practice of seeing the need of another has become ever more difficult during this pandemic. As we begin this season of Advent, this time of preparation for the coming of the Christ child, the birth of one who always noticed the needs of the small and the insignificant ones of the world. The birth of one who himself was birthed small and insignificant. The birth of one who emptied himself for the sake of others. As we prepare our hearts and our spirits to be a place where this Christ child might be born, where there is room for justice, peace, righteousness, and salvation, light and mercy, And as we look with the prophets towards a future bright with the possibilities of God's love, who do you need to see? Who has fallen from your sight? Who needs your attention? Who do you need to notice? Whose potential do you need to encourage? It might be a marginalized group of folks, strangers, and a renewed commitment to advocacy or compassion. It might be an individual right here in this community of faith. Maybe someone at work or in some public place that you go. It might be your spouse or your child or your parents. It might be a friend. 
The prophets do not simply show us the way to Bethlehem, show us the way to the Messiah, show us the way to God's future, show us the way to the new, show us the way to Jesus. They show us a way to see, to open our eyes, to pay attention, to look and not look away, to notice this advent. May we follow as they, Show us the way.